Hi, this is Jerry with I Love RV Life. We get questions about lithium batteries for RVs all the time. And most of these questions come from, hey, I've got an older RV, older camper, and it has lead acid batteries and they have gone bad and I'd like to put in a lithium battery. Can we do that with one of these small 100 amps? Well, we contacted WattCycle. They provided us with one of these 100 amp batteries that we see so often. We're gonna test it out and see how it works. Just gotten home after being three months out on the road. One of the interesting things about this trip that was, uh, you know, quite different than all the others, was all the conversations that we had in the campgrounds as we talked with folks. And so many people were asking all electrical questions. It was really interesting. You know, what do you use for batteries? Uh, I've got this battery. I want to change it out. Uh, you know, will that work? What do we do for surge protection? What do we do for soft starts? Oh my goodness, uh, soft starts were probably half the conversations that we had. But something that kept coming up was, Jerry, we don't boondock. Um, we're just trying to get from point A to point B. So many people now have these larger rigs um, and you know are needing to be keeping their big residential refrigerators going for you know a three hour trip, four hour trip, <laughs> nine hour trip as we do from time to time. And then we had a number of people that just said, look, we don't have the residential refrigerator. We've got a propane you know, two-way or three-way refrigerator, and we want to keep our uh, groceries, you know, all the refrigerated items cold. We want to put it on electric, and our lead-acid battery just can't handle it. It's just, you know, we're running out of juice, uh, out of amperage watts uh, before we actually get to the campground. We really want to go to lithium, and we don't need a big, massive battery. A hundred amps will do. So that's the reason we contacted Walk Cycle. Um, before we came home, uh, they had been sending us emails. Would you like to look at our battery? And I said, sure, we want to look at them. I'm looking for something with a price performance. Now, as of today, uh, at the making of this video, this battery is $189 off their website. Think about that, a 100 amp lithium battery for with prismatic cells on top of that as well for $189. Now you can't even go out and buy a group 27 battery lead acid and definitely not an AGM under that same price point. Maybe if you, even if you can find one of the bargain basement types, you know, for an equal price, look at what you're getting with lithium over lead acid. You're getting twice the capacity of what you would be using with a lead acid. So the answer that I'm going to attempt to prove today is yes, absolutely. You can use a lithium 100 amp hour battery to be able to manage your travel needs. Now again, you're not going to boondock for days on end unless you have a whole lot of solar to be able to get you through, but I doubt that battery is going to make it through the night. It may, it may, I'm not sure. But that's not the goal of today's video. Can we use it for our travels? Now here's the scenario that I want to be able to show you. First of all, I'm gonna take you back and show you my progressive dynamic uh, power area for all my AC and DC, the fuse panel and that type of thing, and also where it has the built-in converter charger. I'm fortunate that in this 2022 Montana, my progressive dynamics had the capability by throwing a dip switch to go from lead acid to Lithium, it was very easy. I didn't have to buy anything. I flipped the switch, there I went. I also use Victron uh, MPPTP controllers. <laughs> it's a mouthful. I use those as well for my solar. And all those have a lithium profile as well as AGM and lead acid. So I didn't have to buy anything. I put the battery in, I changed one dip switch. I went to my solar controller, I changed one profile and boom, I am now in lithium business, no longer having to deal with lead acid. Now. What might you have to do if you've got an older RV, older camper out there, you may have to change out your power supply or the entire uh, converter charger that you have. Now with these progressive dynamics, you most models, if they're not too old, you can change out that power module and put it back in. Either you can do it or you can hire someone to do it. It's not a difficult process. If you have one of the standalones, usually it's just an unplug, unwire, and you can change that back out to one that has a lithium profile. What is a lithium profile? You want to be able to charge these batteries at 14.4 to 14.6 volts 
and you uh, don't uh, have uh, these heavy-duty charges that come in when lead acid go down to uh, bring them back up to where uh, they need to be. You do not have that type of a profile that you need that with a lithium battery. Okay, let me just, before I get started, let me show you what my uh, progressive dynamics look like and I'll show you the little slot. And just in case you have a similar converter charger and uh, power panel. This is my charger converter. It's, uh, you see these on so many, uh, just a little basic model. There's, you know, nothing sophisticated. All my 12 volts goes across here. All my um, 120 volt AC goes here. This is the little magic spot in mine. If you can make out that little square and inside there is a very, very teeny, teeny, teeny um, dip switch. It's not going to show up. There's just no way I can get the camera in there to show it. I found it in the manual. It's there. Um, you can look at your model. Here's my model number. It's um, this. There's my model number. And if you got something similar, um, this meets my needs. It does great. Uh, I've charged, you know, multiple 300 amp hour batteries, 200 amp hour batteries, 100 amp hour batteries. It works like a charm. So again, you're going to have to be able to make that profile. So first, let's look at the specifications for this watt cycle 12 volt 100 amp hour LIFO4 battery. Again, this battery is not that heavy. It only weighs 11 and a half pounds. Uh, rated voltage when it is being used, not at charge, but being used. Chargers off, you're going down the road, you're going to see 12.8 volts. Uh, standard charge voltage on this one is 14.6 volt. The charge cycle is 6 thousand charges. Uh, I'll probably share this with you. It's going to last longer than your camper if you look at something like this. Um, if you wanted to buy these, they're at a great price point. You can put up to four of these together in parallel to get, you know, 400 amp hours at 12.8 volts or you can put them in series up to four if you wanted a 48 volt system and then storage temperature is typical for most of these lead acid batteries 32 degrees Fahrenheit up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit so that is the operating range of these what they say is that you can get a total of 100 amps of continuous discharge we're going to test that you do have to be concerned about is using these lithium batteries in cold climates so the low temperature protection of this kicks in at 32 degrees. So it's not going to charge below 32 degrees, but you can discharge it down to a minus four. Those are Fahrenheit. Those are Fahrenheit uh, readings. So here's the test setup. You see, I've got the battery here. I've got a 3000 watt inverter. Now, let me mention this. I would never put a 3000 watt inverter on this battery. I would use something like a 1000 or even a 2000 and keep it under that capacity. And I'll show you why in a minute. I'm going to take a heat gun and this heat gun draws about 16, 1700 watts. Uh, and that's, that's going to be a lot. That's more than this battery is going to be able to handle from an inverter perspective because it's, you'll see it's going to take a lot of amperage to be able to support that. Now the reason I'm doing this is the battery management system in the specifications state that this battery can handle 100 amps of discharge and then 130 amps of discharge in a protection mode. Well, we're going to get pretty darn close to that. Let's see how this is going to perform. All right, I turned on the heat gun. Uh, sorry, but the, uh, the fan's quite, quite noisy. You see, I'm really, really chewing through this battery right now. I've had it on for about 10 minutes. I was thinking in this test mode it was going to, it was going to actually trip out. We're at 143 amps, 142 amps. Now, according to the specification here, we're only supposed to be able to get 100 continuous out of it. And at 130 amps, uh, we have overcurrent protection, so this BMS is not reporting that. We're still at 130. We're really, really burning through this battery. Here's what I would suggest. If you're going to use a battery like this, make sure you've got a 100 amp fuse. I don't have this fuse. A 100 amp fuse on this um, so this battery doesn't overheat. Surprisingly, it's not overheating. Cables are getting a little warm but not, I mean, just barely warm to the touch. All right, well, this is one thing that we know. That thing is hot. Um, one thing that we know is um, it'll handle over 100 amps, but again, that exceeds the BMS's capability. 
not something that I would do. I would use this in a 1,000, roughly a 1,000 watt, again, 1,500 watt, uh, and not exceed that 100 amps inside this. But it's rocking and rolling. It's handling it. How about that? Now, as part of this test, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to show what it's like. Um, before we leave, we always get this question. Yes, you've got this battery, but will the slides work? Well, yes, the slides are going to work, and I'll show you that. So I'm going to treat this like a travel mode. Here's going to be the test of scenario. I'm going to roll the slides in as though we're going to be leaving. I'm going to roll the slides back out just so that you can see this battery can hand handle that surge. I've got the refrigerator pre-cooled. Um, there's no need to start and consume all your battery uh, on a hot refrigerator. Besides, you're not going to put your groceries in a hot refrigerator either. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to leave our Max Air fans on. It's supposed to get to 97 degrees today, so it's going to be hotter than Blue Blazes. This will be a good stress test. It's going to get warm in here, but I'm going to turn my Max fans on automatic so that I can exhaust some of the heat that's out here. So this refrigerator is probably going to work a little harder than what it would normally work if I had air conditioners running. Of course, I'm not going to be able to run air conditioners on a 100 amp lithium battery. So this will be a, a good test. And uh, we'll see exactly what time I flip the switch on this and let it run on battery only. Um, but we will, and um, we'll let it run. Well, we'll just see. If I can get five hours out of it, I'll be happy. Um, maybe with the, as early as I'm starting this, if I can get seven or eight hours, I'll be thrilled. So uh, we'll just give this thing a run for its money and see what it's going to do. Uh, let's go ahead and get this started. So here we go. Uh, there's the battery installed. This is normally where all the 300s live. This is inside my, my storage bay. And uh, you can see how small this is. Uh, there's my hand laying on it. These prismatic cells are absolutely amazing what they can do with them. We'll go ahead and look at my Victron. Uh, in just a minute and we'll see just from using this clamp on we're drawing about nine amps out of it so we'll see how long this will go the refrigerator could possibly be running wide open through the inverter here's my magnum precision 2000 watt uh, sine wave inverter so that's what's powering my refrigerator and a few other accessories and also i mentioned i'm going to be you know doing the slide test and um, the refrigerator will be running and I'm going to be running fans. So we'll see how this is going to be performing today. This comes up on every single comment of any battery I've ever reviewed. But Jerry, will it work those big heavy duty super slides you've got in that Montana? Well, before we do anything else, we've got the refrigerator running and we've got all these lights on here inside. They're LEDs. So, I don't know. Let's see if the slides will work. So we'll start with what I call the super slide. That baby is some kind of heavy. Let's run it in. Look at that. Rock and roll. And I'm also, I can't show it on the camera, but I'm monitoring the voltage sag. And we went from 13 volts to 12.5. So that's one. Let's run the other slide. All right. So where we're getting ready to travel and we're on battery with the refrigerator running, that would be running the slides in. All right, now we get to our destination. Let's run the slides back out. Um, voltage sag on this lighter slide, even though it is a pretty big boy, is a 12.6 volts. This is real time, I'm not gonna speed it up. And this is the big one. This is the one that's got refrigerator, stove, pantry. Yeah, and they make noise. It's hydraulic. Boom. Well, that answers that. It runs the slides in and out with no problem whatsoever. We'll look at the inverter. This is the Magnum Dimensions. We're running at 13 volts. You see the little green and yellow light, and that means that the inverter is running, so I don't have any AC power. And then walking back over here to the refrigerator, we can see lights on 30 degrees. Again, 30 degrees here on the fridge, zero degrees on the freezer. So it is working. It's 1115 uh, in the morning. Um, the sun is starting to get you know pretty high in the sky. And then it's going to go right over here to 
my left here in the in the video and it is going to blast the side of this camper and that would be just like us driving down i-75 southbound from middle georgia it's just going to blast on the side of the the camper and it's going to get warm in here it's going to get really warm and uh, we'll just see how it's going to work so this is going to really tax this 100 amp battery and that's exactly what i want to be able to show for you i'll see you back i don't know let's see it's uh, again Let's let it go for about four or five hours, and uh, then I'll let you know how this thing is going to be performing. See you in a bit. Okay, it's been five hours. I think the best thing to do is look at the inverter voltage because that is, that's really the critical item. I've got this to where it's going to shut down probably, I think I have it set for 11 volts. So once this gets to 11 volts, boom, the inverter quits, and then I have nothing at the refrigerator. So it's hot. I mean, I'm looking at the thermometer in here. It is, it's 96 degrees and that is even with these fans running. So think about this. Not only is the refrigerator inverter running, but I've got four max fans that's been running basically all day long and they're set on automatic. So they'll speed up and slow down. 96 degrees, that's hot. So that refrigerator is having to work hard and uh, that's making the inverter work hard and that's making the battery work hard. So again, the big issue here is what's our voltage? And if you see here, that battery is at 11.8. Now, it'll be interesting. Again, I think I shut off at 11, at 11 volts. I'll keep an eye on it. Uh, it's gonna be hard, I'm not, it's, again, at 96 degrees. I'm not gonna sit in here for hours and watch that meter and see where it's gonna end up going. But um, it's brutal. It is so hot in here. <laughs> this is crazy. Let's see if we can show this. So if you see, I've got an indoor outdoor thermometer. Outdoor is showing 90, that's because the thermometer's in a drawer. And if you look at the indoor temperature, all it says is high. That's because it only goes two digits. Once it goes to 100 degrees or more, that's all it can show is high. So again, that refrigerator's having to work over time. All right, well, again, we're trying to see in an extreme condition how well will this battery perform. I don't think this could be a, a better day to be able to do this. All right, let's run it. Run for, I'll check it again in another hour, hour and a half. We'll see if we still have an inverter. Well, 5.30 was the mark. It just stopped. We got down to right at, at, right at the 5.30 mark and then the battery voltage got so low in the last few minutes that the BMS completely shut off and that was the end of that. But let's look at the time frame. This was six solid hours in brutal, brutal southeastern United States, middle Georgia heat. Uh, it's over 100 degrees today, so hot that my thermometer won't even read it in here. Um, ambient temperature in here is probably about 96, 97 degrees where I'm standing, so it's hot. And if you look at this, not only were we running a residential refrigerator in a terrible condition, but again, we were running three Max Air fans um, pretty much at full blast to try to, with the windows open, try to get some uh, heat out of here. But, you know, that came at a cost. Um, it, it came at a cost of being able to run those fans and put that task on the battery as well. So where do I leave this? Is that a failure of the ba ba battery? Not by any stretch of the imagination. It just shows you realistically what one can expect out of 100 amp lithium battery in extraordinary heat. Now, if I would have turned our solar system on, um, our solar would have replaced probably by uh, with probably about a margin of a, probably about another 30% on top of what that battery uh, was able to produce. Uh, that would have been the good thing. Um, that would have meant that all day long, solar would have, you know, provided all the power that we would have needed for doing what we uh, wanted for our travel. And then the remainder could have been left over for that evening if we were still not hooked up. And hopefully it would have cooled down some. So if you're looking at something like this uh, and you're considering the type of load that we're doing, um, then you would probably require you to have at least two of these batteries. Or if you are running a propane style refrigerator, the amperage draw is substantially less on 12 volts because we're not doing the 12 volt to 120 volt conversion. There's a probably about a 15, 10 to 15% addition of amperage uh, maybe even more so to convert that 12 volts to 
to uh, 120 volts. And um, so we were, could have probably, if we were just had, you know, an absorption style refrigerator uh, that ran on propane and we were running just the 12 volts on that, we could have probably squeezed this out probably for about another hour and a half or so. If we weren't running the max fans, would that have made a difference? I don't know, because it had been just so blistering hot, the refrigerator would have never turned off. So it's just one of those things that you have to determine what your load capacity is if you're considering going a lithium battery installation. Now, I will mention this as well. If I would have been running a 100 amp, uh, like a group 27 battery, I would have lasted probably about three, three and a half hours. That would have been about all we could do. Running out the slides, running it back in, that took power, and then just running it. So again, we have to be realistic about the test. I appreciate Watt Cycle providing this battery. I let them know up front that this was going to be a realistic environment, that we were going to put a small 100 amp lithium battery through, and they graciously provided that. And uh, again, if you're looking for this type of solution for your RV, large or small, uh, this gives you a value priced lithium battery. Again, as of today, the recording of this video, it's about 189. And of course they've got larger batteries as well if you wanna consider something like that. I will leave links in the description today and you can go out to ilovervlife.com and uh, see the specs on this battery as well as the links for it as well. Appreciate you watching. We'll have more videos soon on some additional products and some additional travel. I do this for one reason, you got it, because I love RV life. Mm -hmm.